Hey guys, we're back to regularly scheduled videos. Uh, this is the one that I've been teasing for so long, I'm sorry, but look, so pretty. This is my bullet journal for October and it's a pocket-sized deluxe Outlander wine, Chic Sparrow notebook. And I am so in love and so happy in here. And so I'm gonna show you all of the details when we turn around. Isn't she beautiful? It's so smooth and gorgeous and I mean I explained this a little bit in that unboxing video but like this Outlander leather is just squishy if that's a thing and I think the thing I love the most about this notebook is the spine here and the way the color variation kind of I mean there's like this little spot here that almost looks like a distressing mark or whatever and here I'll show you I'll open it up so you can see how the spine kind of So there's like a red stripe or a lighter stripe down the middle from where it folds and I think when I look at this notebook it just sort of looks like something that you'd find in like the library of a rich old guy or something like it looks so classy um, so because of that classiness I've kind of kept it um, felt and gender neutral I have included the little bee charm that was on my Verona um, because I liked it there and I got used to having it there and it looks almost empty without it, naked without it, so I, uh, I put that on there. Other than that, I don't have any charms, any bookmarks, um, any, you know, little dangly jangly bits. I do have some tabs here on top that I um, used Carrie Harling's tutorial, uh, which I can link below if you're interested, because she's awesome, we all know. We all love Carrie Harling, right? Uh, she talks about how to make these tabs and they've got, um, they're on these little post-it tabs so that they're actually removable. So I have this one that says just month and so after October I'll move it to November. You've already seen these pages. Um, so I'm going to go through this from like front to back and then from the inside out if that makes sense. So first I'm going to show you like how it's decorated and then I'll show you how I'm planning in here. So this is the usual pen by the way. This paper is from Michaels and it's gold foiled and I love it. It makes me really happy every time I open it up. It's around a field notes here with the grid. Then the next uh, insert here has this like gold foiled vellum that I got from Hobby Lobby. And then this is just a piece of scrapbook paper that I've had in my stash. It's probably from Michael's, but maybe from Joanne's or maybe from somewhere else. I don't know. I've had it for forever. Uh, then over here, uh, this piece of cardstock is from Joanne's. I had got it or I had bought it for, um, I think my July insert because I was doing like themed month colors. And so I was going to do like a different color cover depending on what the color inside was. And I I think it was July that I did red, um, but I ended up using the teal paper because then I went with like a teal overall theme for the colors in my notebook and so I ended up not using this one and so I'm using it now. Um, and it's just, you know, red and cardstock. Oh, I didn't mention, so this vellum and scrapbook paper are around a Moleskine Um They're, it's just, it's a lined paper and it's the normal moleskine paper and the back half is perforated which I'm not really taking advantage of um, and is sort of just something that I'm hoping won't become an issue. <laughs> it also has a back pocket um, which is like glued down to here and over to here so it's not really super useful for like paper so what I have in here is my nail file because I obsess about my nails and if I don't have something to file a, you know, bumpy part off, I will pick at it and it will ruin everything. Alright, where was I? Uh, this little sticker is from Voodoo Berry, V-U-D-U-B-E-R-I. They do have a an Etsy shop, but they don't sell these stickers there. I got this sticker from a um, the booth at Comic-Con last year, 2016. Um, though I think they might have been selling the stickers this year, I don't know, but this character is called Baby Sasquatch and he's cute and I stuck him on here. Another field notes. Uh, then the back uh, insert is wrapped in this piece of 
gold dotted uh, acetate from Michaels. You probably recognize this acetate. They sell like three different acetates at Michaels and this is one of them. Um, I've got all of the sticky notes that I had in my older my other journal um, in here. And I don't have all of the flags because there's not room for all of the flags because I have downsized. This is another piece of scrapbook paper that came in the same pack with this one. And it's like these postcard, postmark things, which is cool. And then the back of this moleskin, the pocket is where I'm keeping my um, book darts. Side note, for those of you who use bookmarks, isn't it awesome how they, um, they get this like distressed look when you use them? Cause like they come out and they look kind of like this. They're like shiny and new and perfect or whatever. But then when you use them and the oils and stuff from your finger, make it all rustic and it looks so cool. So that's just a side note. Another side note is that this gold acetate is rubbing off on the secretarial pocket in the back here. So I've got this gold here, here, here. I have not tried rubbing it off yet. I might try like a baby wipe or something, but it's kind of coming off like this dot is almost gone. Uh, if you can see when I kind of move it, this one here is kind of going. Yeah, you probably can't see. So I don't know if that's ever happened to you. I wanted to have the plastic one in the back so that like the pen loop and stuff wouldn't bother the insert. Cause I find like the, this is the only real closest thing to a dashboard I have in here. Everything else is paper. Um, so I, I thought that it would be protecting the insert, but instead it's getting stuff on my notebook. I've noticed actually a little bit of the same thing happening on the front here from this foiled paper. So I don't know. You just can't win. Either you have pretty things or, you know, and they ruin your other pretty things or you make it boring and who would want to live that way? Um, oh, and the tabs, I mentioned that they're post-it flags. Um, this font is a free font I found on a website. It's called Sophia with a PH. I also found a font with Sophia with an F. Sophia with a PH looks like this and it comes with like a version um, left and right that have these little curly cues. So this little M is Sophia left and it's got the curly cues. And I did that so that the shorter words, see today and notes also have them. Um, so that the shorter words would be a little bit wider compared to some of the longer words so that the uh, tabs would be roughly the same width, though they're really not like compare that. I might try to redo the tabs, but I think I won't do that until uh, November because I'm probably going to like redo the covers and dashboards and things for the next month just to, you know, stay festive and keep things interesting and fun. And so I'll probably try to redo the tabs. And by then I'll have a better idea of whether I'm using certain ones or whether there's some that I need because already I think there's one or two that maybe I would want to include um, and others that I'm not using as much but maybe just need to get into the habit of it because I've never had tabs before and uh, it's kind of nice to just have a quick bookmark to... Sorry, I said bookmark as if I didn't mean a literal bookmark but, you know, a quick <laughs> bookmark to uh, where I need to be at various times of the day. So for example today. Um, but let's actually go from the back front, sort of, because the way that I'm planning in here has been influenced by uh, the getting things done method, which I just finished reading the book. That was like my project for, uh, for September besides, you know, video every day was reading that book and getting it done. Um, getting, getting stuff done, done. So my system sort of starts with the back insert. This is just a moleskin. I'm like getting used to using lined paper and I don't think I like it. I think that they make these moleskins in a grid, um, but they don't sell them at Target. I'd have to get them off Amazon. And I think when I, I have one more of these, I think when I'm done with the lined ones, I might get the grid ones. Um, but I still have to decide whether I would rather have like between this is an aside. Between the field notes and the moleskins, which are the same size with basically the same cover, except this one doesn't say anything. It's just, it's embossed on the back and you can't even tell, but that says moleskin. Um, this cover is slightly thicker and has a pocket, so that's great. But um, besides like put, putting paper quality and all of that aside, um, 
this one has fewer pages and this one the back half is perforated maybe you like perforated pages maybe you find that that ability is fantastic for lists or whatever um, personally I have perforated paper in my wallet setup which is going to be shown to you in another week or so so I'm not going to get into that but like I don't see myself needing to pull these out so no I'm just finding it to be like something I'm worried about uh, so I don't want to be worried about the pages falling out so I have to decide whether I'd rather have the extra pages that the Moleskine offers or the security of not thinking they're going to fall out and as I'm setting this down I realize I didn't show you I taped a little envelope on the inside of this dashboard and I have not found a use for it yet um, this little vellum envelope came with a set of like miniature stationery at Daiso um, if you can kind of see it says animal party on the front of it and so it's backwards um, this particular set is the hedgehog ones because hedgehogs are the best um, and I thought that maybe it would be handy to have a pocket in here because I don't have like the zipper pocket anymore um, I don't have a ruler in here right now or a straight edge at all that's the only thing that I'm thinking I might want to include but I'm really getting sidetracked let's talk about my planner setup Start it in the back and this is where I have the notes tab so I'm trying out the sort of brain dump idea where in theory every time I think of a thing I write it down here um, and that's covering something you shouldn't see but basically this is this is a brain dump I did like at the end of last month um, there's also some other notes like this is an MH uh, event that's going on that I'm taking notes for this is a game that I was playing um, these are just some numbers that I wrote down because I needed somewhere to write some numbers and then see this is actually like a whole spread um basically in my previous bullet journal setup i had two inserts that had collections and one had all of the long-term and reference collections and the other one was short-term collections but the thing is that can mean anything from like a day to a few months um and so this is kind of my thought is to have this insert be the one i don't care about I don't care if it looks crummy. I don't know if it, you know, I don't care if it's messy. Um, and so I can put things in here that I'm not sure if I want to keep. This is like sort of temporary. I wanted to just sort of know what things I have to work on each week so that they get done in time, but so that I'm not stressing about them too soon. So in theory, this could have gone in my short term collections insert but I didn't I didn't put it there um and so I don't know are you gonna accuse me of something like whatever anyway so this is where I brain dump and then once I have written it down I find a period of time where I can process that hopefully within a couple days and then uh all of this stuff gets moved to where it belongs so either it can go straight to my weekly or it can go into my projects um this is the projects, this is insert number two in here. And so I have basically this uh, index is like a list of current projects. And it has a column here for a dot, which means sort of on the horizon and or has a page assigned. And then the asterisks mean that I'm currently working on it. And so whenever I check here my my I should go straight to those first so that I see them I'm still working on that but basically the idea here is like some of these uh, projects have page numbers and some of them have due dates along the edge here and then it's actually like four pages long this one's all just YouTube videos ideas and these two should have each gotten their own page because they don't fit so I have spilled over onto the general projects list for some of these things but that's fine um, and so this is both my list of current projects and soon to be upcoming projects um, plus like my project pages where I have all the notes on the project you know each page is a project and I take notes like here's the flip through video that you haven't seen yet this is coming out next week this is the flip through of my last planner setup which was requested like months ago and I never got around to it and so now that I'm finally out of that planner you get to see what was in it um, so I took all the notes for that in here and so it's over here on my YouTube ideas flip through page 8 and that's what's there but that's only 
half of the journal. The second half is my short-term collections. Um, and so this is where I'm not 100%, I'm, no, I'm pretty sure actually that I'm not gonna keep it like this. Um, I got the idea to split a journal between two different things, again from our favorite Carrie Harling. Um, she talks about in her Tiny TN uh, video about how you can fit like extra inserts by turning one insert into two inserts by using it for two different things, basically. Um, and so I thought, I'm not sure how many pages of this, how quickly I'm going to go through this. I'm not sure how quickly I'm going to go through this. So let's put them in one insert. We'll get an idea and then figure it out. I'm pretty sure at this point, and I'm only, you know, a few pages in, but I'm pretty sure at this point that I am going to separate this journal into two in the next setup, whenever that is. But it's not like it matters too much if I run out of, say, pages in the front first, then I'll just keep using the pages in the back. I don't mind that. Um, I just need to find a way to number them properly. But anyway, uh, this is an index for my short-term collections. Uh, I've got my YouTube schedule coming up, some YouTube stats, a wish list. Uh, this is my bra tracker. This used to be the colorful one from my old spread or my old uh, setup that like is I admittedly a little bit OCD. Um, here I one of the things I learned in September and doing the minimalist Bujo challenge was that I don't have to use all those colors for that spread that I can just use the letter of the color instead of writing it in that color and that way I don't have to you know keep those pens with me or sit down at my desk to update a simple spread um, so yeah I using this the same way I used my um, it was a column in my tracker in the minimalist setup and so here I've got basically each month is two columns here and I have the numbers along either side just to be artsy. So when I get through the 15th, I will come back up to the 16th on this side. So this is October, November, December, like that. And uh, it will work for my purposes. I will have clean laundry and it'll be great. This is just a list of things I want to watch off Netflix and stuff. This page uh, is like a checklist of spreads to check in on. This is all very recursive. This is a checklist of the pages I need to check in on at uh, different times. So every day I should fill in my bra tracker so I don't forget what bra I wore. I went to clean it. My habit tracker, which is in the front insert and I will show you in a minute. And then um, every week I should check in on my project list to make sure that I'm working on what I need to be working on to get it done in time. Uh, my MH master list, which is the same as it was in my last setup and is also in the front insert, which I will show you. Make sure I have the tithe check for next Sunday and check my, you know, check in with my waiting on spread. also in the first, um, that's part of the getting things done system is the waiting on the brain dump, the project list, the project pages, all of this so far is inspired by GTD. Um, and we'll see how well it's working for me, but so far, so good, I think. Uh, these are the stretches that I need to do, and stretch is one of the things on my weekly tracker. Uh, and this just reminds me which stretches it means when it says stretch. So there you go. And then that's all I have in here. I have a feeling that I'm going to run out of pages in the front half before pages in the back half. But I think that's fine. Um, also... I don't know, I feel like part of the reason that I'm not using this uh, short-term collections section for that much is because it's the lined paper and collections are hard when you want to make like columns and stuff, but you can't because it's lined paper and you have to like get out a ruler and measure like quarter inches and that's a mess. Like I did with this one, I had out a ruler and I made dots and then I connected the dots with a ruler and a pen. Like, that's old school stuff. I much prefer the grid. All right, let's look at the front insert. This one, I showed you a little bit in a sneak preview of one of my videos last month. It's the index, pretty index. I included this sticker from Chic Sparrow. These come with all the orders, and so I had three of them from my uh, second chance orders, and I have used one of them here, because it's pretty. And then uh, these monthly spreads or calendars I had set up and I showed them uh, in 
a video earlier or last month. So we've got, yeah, October, November, December. It was just this red, which looked really sad by itself, so I added the green checks on top. And now it looks more Christmassy. January, because for some reason I associate January with blue. February and March. And then the rest here is just a general future log using your Alistair method. And I only have stuff over here. Nothing happening late 2018 yet, because who thinks that far ahead? This is the MH master list I mentioned. Uh, it looks pretty much exactly the same as it did in the last setup. Uh, and this is just where I remember different duties I have on myhogwarts.com. Shout out to myhogwarts.com if you're a fan of my ho of Harry Potter and like people or taking lessons or playing Quidditch or whatever. Myhogwarts.com. Okay. This is the Quidditch team that I'm a part of and who has what brooms and what prefers what positions because I'm helping out with making the roster for the team. Uh, this is for the Wizard College and all of the professors and all of this has been in my previous setup. This is a new spread that I've been sort of trying to figure out for a while now. How do I have like a monthly spread of things I want to get done every month and then there's some things that I want to get done like every two weeks and am I supposed to have a separate page for every two weeks? Well, what about a just general recurring task list? What? So I want to change my razor every two weeks. The last time I did it was October 1st. And so that means the next time I do it is in October, what, 16th? What? Uh, no, 15th. Look at that, it says change razor. So the idea is that whenever I do the thing, I update the date and I put it in the calendar or future log where it belongs. Um, because that that's the reminder to get it done the next time. But this is a reminder of when I did it the last time. So like change oil every six months. The last time I did it was in August. So the next time I'm going to do it is in February. So it's just here. It just says oil change or when the odometer is going to be. If it hits that first, which it probably won't. I don't drive very far. Um, then I'll change the oil and then I'll say last oil change, February, whatever, and put it on my future log. So that's the idea. Um, and there's plenty of room for all of those things and I'm hoping that this will make me feel like a better adult who remembers to change their sheets and stuff. This is the same habit tracker or good habits or whatever um, that I was using. I keep saying this, it's all the same, it's the same spreads from my last setup, but this one has different dimensions and is uh, slightly smaller because of the number was different and I wanted it all to fit. So. I condensed things a little bit down here and I filled in all of the things that I got done in uh, September, which was on that uh, quantity tracker that I had included. Um, so I used that, transferred all of that data onto here in the form of colorful squares. And now it's actually on my weekly tracker. It says trackers, which means broad tracker and habit tracker. This is what I mean about things getting recursive and repetitive, is that I have a habit on my habit tracker to fill out my habit tracker in a different habit tracker. Yeah. I do get a little bit obsessive, but it's so pretty, right? And it does, you know what, I feel like having, having this reminder here and these colorful squares here, it, I feel like I'm more likely already since I've moved back to the colors to actually do these things and prioritize these things than I was in my last setup when all I got to do as a result was just write the day's date. I kept forgetting to put that. I feel like I missed a couple days. But here I'm like, oh yeah, I can, you know, lay out clothes. Laying out clothes is a habit I really want to form because I feel like it's just such a boost to my like emotional state throughout the day. If I look at myself in the mirror at work and I have like a well put together outfit, then I just feel so much better about myself as a person. And I don't have the mental capacity to put uh, an outfit together at seven in the morning when I'm rolling out of bed. So I gotta do it the night before if I wanna feel good about myself. This is my debt payment and savings tracker. It is the same. I, instead of making 
Like these are all loans that I paid off before I moved into this notebook. But it makes me so happy that we paid them off that I included them on here anyway. That is the kind of person I am. Not only do I put to-do list as the first item on my to-do list so I can cross it off as soon as I'm done, I include loans that I've already paid down in my loan payment tracker. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I do kind of like the way this is decorated. Um, I got this washi tape that matches these stickers I had already gotten, both from Hobby Lobby. This one came with it, and then these ones just kind of match, and it's all pretty. It's like uh, growth, financial growth and health with the green and the growing and the plants, right? Uh, whatever. This is the uh, awe-inspiring baby name spread entitled Names We Don't Hate and it has one name on it. We don't have any ideas and good thing we're not expecting a baby because we don't know what we'd name it. Uh, let's see, gift ideas. I'm covering up the one I haven't gotten for anybody yet, but yeah, this is probably going to get a lot more use. Uh, come Christmas. Though generally this isn't really just like a sit down and figure out what you're getting everybody for Christmas kind of list. It's more like a, oh that's cool, I should consider that for next time I need to get something for my husband and then I write it down here so I don't forget. So that's what's under the sticky. Here we go, this is the GTD stuff. The, the someday maybe list, stuff that it would be nice if I got to do sometime, or things that like, technically they're projects that should be on my project list, but every time, like this PC filters thing, oh my gosh. Like, we have a husky and there's a lot of fur and it just, it gets everywhere. But every time I, I got like this filter stuff that you can put on like your computer filters, but just figuring out which direction each fan goes, because you're not supposed to put it on the intake or it'll overheat. And so every time I, I dust out my PC, I pull out that filter stuff and go, am I going to figure this out? And then I say, no, I'll just dust my PC in another three months. Is that right? Yeah, three months. So the next time is going to be November, next month. There you go. Uh, waiting on is stuff that, you know, I've sent correspondence and I'm waiting to hear back. I need to pay my sister for a book that she got us, but she has to let us know how much it costs to send it. And yeah, so I'll bug her about that probably when we do my next weekly check-in with... I'm trying to show you what I'm looking for. The... Yeah, when I weekly check on my waiting list, then I will see it and go, yeah, I should call back. This is a birthday spread, and I still need to finish filling it out, um, coming up with more people to put on here and remembering the actual date uh, of people's birthdays and stuff. Um, so this is something that I'm going to check in with every month as well, just to kind of keep it on the horizon. I thought it wouldn't hurt, especially for some of the like nieces and nephews um, that I don't like automatically know their birthdays. Like I know my my birthday, my husband's birthday and stuff, but some, some I forget. This is a pen test on the field notes paper for your edification and reference. This is the Pilot Friction 05, right? No bleed through at all. It sits on top of the paper. So does the friction color. It just sits right on top of the paper. You can kind of technically see some ghosting, but like it's not going to bleed. It's never going to bleed. It just sits, like I said, on top of the paper. Tombow, the Stabilo, bleeds quite badly. I don't know if you can really see this. I use the black option for all of these. But if you look at this spread, you might be able to see how badly that Stabilo fine liner bleeds. Uh, yeah, that's all those dots and words are my checklist here, and that's all in Stabilo, and it, it bleeds. But, you know, I don't really care. So there you go. Uh, go for the lighter pens. The Pigma Micron works okay, but there's quite a lot of ghosting. This paper is not thick. That's another thing that, like, I think the Moleskine might be a better quality paper. But I'm not really worried about that too much. It doesn't really bother me that much. All right. And the last thing to show you in this very long and rambling flip through is my planning uh, insert, which this here is just like a next week, week after, week after. Basically, if there's not enough room on the monthly spread or if I want to assign something to a particular week, it's going here. This is my week 
And isn't it pretty? I'm using my Alistair Week because as we established at the end of my September videos, this works for me. It just, it helps me visualize my week in a way and sort of plan things in a way that I can't do otherwise. Um, and I just, I need to have it here. I am sort of using the same thing on this side too. So this is project and you probably can't tell. I These things look like they're crossed out, but actually it's just the, um, the gray friction color marker and I'm using it as a highlighter and it kind of doesn't look like a highlighter but um so I'm probably going to try using a different color for that next time but I've highlighted things that are like multi-step projects to sort of remind me like you should be working on this um even though you did it yesterday you should do it again tomorrow maybe uh like that so these are just like tasks and so the idea is I've got my projects on my project thing and then each of these, like you can flip to the project page, you can see outstanding tasks that I've written down maybe, or whatever. And then next action items in the GDD parlance go here. And then I move them onto my daily to actually do them. These dailies are very basic. I haven't really changed the daily except that I added color and the color makes me happy. Um, like. I'm realizing the whole minimalist bujo challenge thing, like, I don't really do anything crazy. It's just having a little bit of color is nice. And I did find myself, like, Monday, just looking at this and going, well, that's really pretty. I haven't put the header for Tuesday yet, but this is Tuesday's list. Um, just having some stickers and washi, it just makes things a little bit more pleasant to look at. That's really all it is. Um, and I set this up. This is the tracker and it is the same Alistair columns the whole way down. Um, so yeah, this is just like a weekly tracker. I might expand this next week as I come up with more things I want to track. And then this here is my like production schedule for the videos I want to make this week. Um, also with the Alistair columns. And then this here is like the one project that I want to make my focus. Um, so I already I put this here and then kind of second guessed it, but I had written it in ink and so I was like, okay, I'll leave it. Um, but it's also over here as well so that I can actually schedule it. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this section for next week, but for this week it's there and it's pretty and it's reminding me of stuff. So I will probably uh, fill up this page before the end of the week, almost definitely. And then probably decorate another spread just sort of like this. And then, uh, get on with things and like work on stuff and get things done so if that made any sense if you want your bearings again first insert future log and long-term collections and like reference stuff second insert is project planning and short-term collections third insert planning and fourth insert brain dump and miscellaneous notes and that's it i don't have anything in these pockets um I probably should put something in the pockets, like maybe a ruler, but I have to find my ruler. I don't know where I put it. Um, but mostly just, I'm really enjoying having like a nice slim, it's like a, it's book shaped and the pockets give this cover a lot more structure. You know, you've got your three layers of leather here. So it's got the structure. It lays pretty flat. Like you can't see this from that angle, but it lays pretty flat when it's uh, just sitting even without the elastic and it just, looks really classy and makes me feel like super professional just carrying it around. I really am liking the size so far. Um, the personal size, which by the way, this is the notebook for the personal size. I'm still using this actually, not for planning, but um, just for the other things that I had some inserts in here that I was using for other things while I was bujoing in here. This one is the Bible studies notebook. Uh, this one is the notes on things for my sister's wedding, which I'm not using very much, but we'll probably use more of as that gets closer. And then this is my long form journal. So I have that in here and it's all slim and looking cool too. Like I'm really kind of digging the, uh, the thin traveler's notebook aesthetic right now. And uh, hopefully that will only encourage me to be more productive. I apologize for the whining husky. He, I think, heard my husband come home and wants to go outside to say hello. So I'm going to go do that as well. Thank you guys for watching. I am sorry about teasing you so long with this video. I really was excited to show you the whole thing and dig in really deep. So thank you for everybody who watched all the way through. I apologize for my rambling. I apologize for continuing to ramble right now. But don't forget to like and subscribe if you are interested in any of these videos. I post three times a week. 
and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.